Emil, take it away. Okay. So this is something that I felt I wanted to talk about in this show. Okay. Um, factions, focus, lore. I love the world of Mythic Legions, you know. So I I thought that if I could have some minutes to discuss this uh, with you and uh, the people here, you know. Uh, so we said that we start with a faction, you know, some lore about the world. We love the figures. Do we love the lore? Maybe. Maybe we don't. I do. So this is a chance for me to talk about them. Okay? Can't wait. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's so go. this is something that I th think we should start with. Uh, this is a very short one. I mean, Jeremy Girard is writing a, a, a book about the whole story of, of the mythos. And uh, that book I'm looking forward to so much. So I'm just going to go this super brief here because we're going to go to uh, a specific faction soon. Just this. Helios and Selene were two beings who together created the whole world of mythos. Okay. Like together? Helios. Like, I mean, together. Was, it like, yeah, together. was it like love? Or was yes, it just... exactly like okay. that. Okay. All right. But I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> love can be in many different ways. I mean, they're both a couple of in shape, good looking people. I mean, why not? Yeah. And that's, and that's very important for this story, actually. Okay. Okay. Helios created all the the nature, the world of the stones, and you know everything like that. And Selene created the beings, the wonderful humans and elves and and creatures on the world. Um, and I, she loved them very much. She loved them so much that Helios got envious of her love for her creation. So that's why I'm saying. So this is where the conflict starts. I get okay. it. Yeah. So he, <laughs> you get it that he. Well, yeah. Envious? You know, it's like when you, you know, you, you, you have your first kid, and all your wife does is dote over the kid. She doesn't care about you anymore, and she's into being a mom more than she is to being your wife. And you get all like, you know, kind of like, man, these kids are cool. I love them, but this kind of sucks. I guess you understand. Am I, am I reading in, in, into it a little too much, or? Are you, you're reading in everything correct here because that is what happened. So what did Helios do? He thought up a plan. Maybe if I'll get rid of all the creatures <laughs> that Celine has created, then she would put her focus back to me. So he's taking so it he a little. Started, he's don't, taking don't, it a step further than I was thinking. Yeah, but don't okay. get rid of your kids, Stephen. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. So he created bees, like you know orcs and, and vampires, perhaps, you know, evil creatures. So the war started. But something happened. And that was his uh, jealousy was, uh, it expanded, it, it grew so much. So four great beings were created. The details, are, I'm sure we're going to find out later, but uh, the four great gods of mythos were created here and so they started to to run amok you know that they started to to destroy the world in their different ways you know so did he intend this or did he not we don't really know that right now but the world was about to go you know be destroyed so Celine created the four great beasts. So are they still into each other? Because it sounds like they're in a fight now. It it really sounds like they're in a fight. Yeah. Uh, I think I think this is not the best period of their life. Okay. I think the creation creation process was a lot more fun. All uh, right. When they created the world. So, so how did they how did they create these groups? Do we know? No, they didn't create the groups actually. Hmm. Uh, the, the the she created the four great beasts oh okay and they, Ow. And Ow. We, we're not going to go into details here now because they all created a following you know so before i go into the faction for today um what happened was that 
we know that this the um, the first great war of mythos ended with the four gods of evil uh, being well removed from mythos you know right and at the same time the four great beasts disappeared from mythos so that's what we know and so for four years now we've seen the four different uh, evil factions being turned into mythic legions figures you know mm -hmm. because they are coming back and uh, to start the second great war of mythos so the faction for today will be necronominus and i just put up the world map here of mythos so I mean, undead skeletons and warriors, they can, of course, exist everywhere. But if we're talking about pre um, the, the time before Necronominus came back, it, this was this southern parts here. Th that's that's the what, what? Why did you laugh? <laughs> Just because I'm, I'm I'm your presentation here is pretty. I mean, you put the circle up. We know exactly it brings my eye there. I feel like I'm in a PowerPoint presentation. You're just. You're excelling, Emil, and keep keep doing that. Well, I, what what this world is fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. And and if you're not interested in this, you can just skip this and come to to other talks. No, later. don't skip it. This is. I fun. I I, I, made, I made a thin circle up here because we have a couple of skeletons so far characters from Wykenfell up in the north. So I just made a small circle there as well because that's pretty important. So this is the map. These are all the characters being released so far, you know, or released, I mean, on pre-order. <clears throat> I just want to show this and I'm going to go through this, some of them pretty quick. And you have ideas here, of course, you know? Yeah. So first we go to the pre, you know, after the first great war, all the four gods are away. They're gone. So what is left here? You know, that's where we are right now. So, we have a lot of soldiers that are, we don't need to say that much. We have the builders. The skeleton yeah. builders, they were released and from the beginning. We have the gold skeletons, were, which are also classified as a soldier. Uh, later on, we got the skeleton soldiers, which are also the soldiers, you know, the 2.0 <laughs> skeletons. The 2.0. Right. With the alternate yeah. female and male. Yeah, stuff. exactly, exactly. Yep. We have to remember uh, to be... Um, audio right we're working for good audio. remember to say good things. i'm not used yeah. to that so I'll, okay. I'll learn and then we have the deluxe skeleton leader builder which is also classified as a soldier so we have a the grunts the legions yeah yes and then we come to some of the characters very important to the first day after the first great war morgulith the high priestess she was the leader of necronominus you know, uh, when Necronomus himself was absent. Morgulith was the high priestess and leader. And one cool thing about her is the, the ability that she has to see through her skeleton warrior's eyes. You know, I just think that's that's a cool thing to remember about her. It's kind of like a hive mind. Yeah, exactly. Of so some sort. Pretty powerful being. Malleus, who is considered to be the emissary of Necronominus. And he is, he looks like a crazy warrior, but he's more like, well, he's classified as both the judge, jury and executioner. But he is, he's seen as the heir, the ear, ear of Necronominus. So it's a, he's very devout to the, to preaching that the, the the teachings of his father, you know. Yeah. So both of these are considered the children of Necronominus. So can he hear what all the skeleton soldiers hear? That that would be horrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't it know. It seems like a theme running through it here. It is, but that that That's is the uh, maybe we'll find that out later. We don't know that yet. Oh, okay. And the third child of necronominus who are still here that's the brother mandibulus and he is the warlord 
uh, he is he is really the one that's violent and loud and you know uh, he's the, com the slaughter machine you know so these three are the ones that are running them and you know we've seen many of these for many years and is he the, is long, he the mouth that that it does not say. <laughs> does he taste what all the soldiers taste? <laughs> How horrible! <laughs> what, what if you would make fun of him to you which eat one? Something really sour. Uh -huh. Which one Just smells? To... <laughs> yeah. Do we know the smeller yet? <laughs> I'm I'm so sad for the smeller. <laughs> I really hope they don't make a character like that. So we're still here. Necronominus and uh, his followers are many of his followers are gone. So we have some characters. Tibius, who is classified as the warrior, and basically it says that he's a he's a great commander who lives to. Um, he's consumed with recruiting soldiers, then leading them in battle. You know. Yeah. I always yeah. imagine Tibius is really fast. Because he's because of... Go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. Because of his racing stripes. Yeah. Like a Ferrari. Yeah. The racing or a Mustang. <laughs> the dual wielding... If anything has stripes or a number on it, it's fast. Very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers go, go ahead, or stripes. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted a car with a number on it because I yeah. thought it made it would make it fast. Maybe we need a custom Tibius with a number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another character is that's Clavian. Ooh, coming with uh with All Stars. Or he soon, is soon. He, he, his uh, role was actually as a raider. That's that's a little bit interesting. But I I really like Clavian. I've uh, his bio is actually makes him way cooler than you know he is because isn't he the one that can like sh turn his bones into weapons? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. He, he's created with, with the blood magic. Yes. You know? And I so think that's really to, fun. Just to rip your arm out off and use it as a weapon and then it will grow back. Yeah. Now, is, is Clavian... Clavian? He's just the guy. But is there other blood magic red skeletons? Because I feel like they're all right. But there are his crimson hued brethren, you know. Yeah. So Pelvicus is probably yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I can you can rip off Pelvicus can rip off parts and use them as weapons. I think the jury's out, but I I don't I don't think it says he can't. I Let's mean, I think it does. it's on the table. <laughs> okay. I don't know if Pelvicus is motivated to do that because he's just hanging out in his cauldron, but. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure Clavian and Pelicus would get along. I don't get the feeling that they, they're the same kind of personalities. Yeah. I, <laughs> Clavian wants to go raid something and Pelvicus is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he, well, okay. He's also very poisonous, you know? So so if you get hit by, uh, you know, from his bones, yeah, that's... Pelvicus is furry clan, but I believe in Pelvicus' bio it says he's also made from the blood magic. Mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, yeah, just Jesse's telling us that uh, doesn't mean he's blood magic or that Clavian is fury. No. So I guess we just don't know. We need we need Jeremy. Where's Jeremy? We need Source Horseman. Yeah, we need the book. He, I tell you where Jeremy is. He's playing with all his freaking cosmic legions up oh, to his eyeballs he's I'm like sure scrooge he McDuck. he's like scrooge mcduck diving into that big pile of <laughs> cosmic legions he, he has he is <laughs> I, I would see too. <laughs> <laughs> he is a giant tower of parts um, of his, little feet, his little feet are sticking out of the top of the pile <laughs> of cosmic <laughs> uh, that's awesome go ahead professor okay <laughs> here we have ilgar the did you skip yeah I, I actually put the graphics in the wrong order. Oh, so okay. I'm right. I'm, I'm Go ahead. Them Just ignore it. Then. Yeah. So Ilgar, uh, uh, this is the first character we get from Weikenfell. You know, you know, a brutal warrior Viking that strikes a deal with Malleus. So like, 
mm, maybe I can get reborn into something awesome and cool. And then, well, it says that he is not the same anymore, <laughs> except for, I mean, being old bone. But he is um, he's more bloodthirsty after this deal, you know. And considered to be one of the congregation's most savage fighters. And the first of more characters from Vikenfell. I know he's one of my favorite dwarves. I just want to confirm, because Source Horseman is up now, that I know we're not talking about Pelvicus, but Pelvicus was once counted amongst the blood magic powered skeletons. So he is the same thing as Clavian. There you see. Cool. So confirmed, he can rip off his bone and use it as a weapon. Nice. Should be able um, to. Yes. Here we have Scaphoid. Oh, it's and my he's favorite. A poison skeleton. And why I put him in the order after Ilgar is because he is the last character uh, from Necronominus before Necronominus will arrive. Because he is, he uh, is, um, uh, he's being, he's the representative of Necronominus to go to the uh, Covenant of Shadows. Oh, that's right. Yeah, where, where the dark forces are gonna make up the plan to to get uh, get all the gods back into Mythos. So why is Scaphoid being sent there? You know, that's because he is a poison skeleton. And the the, the weird thing with him is that, uh, you know people or characters that are used to know magic and then are being turned into skeletons they tend to be turned into poison skeletons so the magic kind of transfers with them into their skeleton forms but they tend also to have pretty big problems to handle this and mm -hmm. thus they can spontaneously explode and kill everyone around them so scaphoid is being sent to this meeting if every, something goes wrong he can simply just blow up and, and kill everyone at the at the meeting or maybe maybe it's because they don't want him around them <laughs> probably yeah. so he so maybe <laughs> scaphoid is their de de designated road tripper they're like scaphoid uh yeah we have a meeting we have to send someone to <laughs> yeah we're sending him <laughs> send the guy that can kill us all <laughs> that is just awesome like I'd like to stay here. No, nope. no, nope. you're the best for this job. Oh, but I hate, I hate the beds are really lumpy. <laughs> no, go. <laughs> so after this, we turn to the return of Necronominus himself. Oh. Thank you for the noise. I was going to say noise, but I mean the the hymn. Necronominus, the god. Okay. Well, he's seen to be the most powerful of the four gods. Um, and uh, except talking about how mighty and cool he is, he has this weapon that is called the God Racer. And the, the, <laughs> the good thing with that is that he, he resurrects fallen, you know, to turn into skeletons. That is how he started from the beginning when he he became into came into being you know um just started r racing up armies god he's so cool looking I'm he so is cool. so cool looking he's amazing and his just conobus his steed um yeah though there was one thing with him yes uh it's Does Conobus clopping... have powers? Is he yeah, like... there is one thing. With the clopping of his hooves awakens the dead. Oh, right. Okay. So the clapping of his hooves awakens the death, and then, then uh, Necronominus wields the god racer to turn them back into soldiers. You know? Right. Okay. Okay. So I, I kind of put them together up here. Instead of putting Konobus back down here as a character, because he belongs to Necronominus. And so I thought Maxilius the Harvester, the herald of Necronominus, he should be up here as well. Do you think he calls him Harry? 
Harry the Herald? Harry yeah. the Herald? <laughs> Short for Harold. Just they call just... him Max. Oh. Max hey. Harry. Harry Max. Fun. Okay, sorry. Oh. Harry I like Harry Max. So <laughs> So what is he? Of course, he goes together with Necronominus. He goes before him and kills. He slays the people and Necronominus raises them to become skeleton arms. So they, you know? No, the horses, the horses hoofs raise them, right? And then Necronominus makes them into soldiers. Yes, that's true. And and uh, Harry Max here, he, he, he kills them. So he's the step before. He goes before, kills them, and then Necronominus and Conobus comes after. So know. all those people down below them that we already mentioned don't get to kill anyone? No. Okay. Peace lovers. All right. Peace lovers. <laughs> Not everyone is mean. I don't know. I think they're mean. Okay, maybe. I got to tell you, listening to no. this and looking at these guys, I don't know. I don't know where what the good guys are going to put up against this. I, I don't think I don't think barbarians and uh Armored knights are quite a match for this this bunch. Uh, Go ahead. It seems <laughs> grim. It seems grim. Yeah, very. <laughs> so, with that, there were also skeleton raiders from Vikingfell. Crazy guys who who had been um, you know killed up in Vikingfell that were turned back to to <laughs> to to, li- to to life. When Necronominus came back, you know, so it's more soldiers, more soldiers. And here we have, was this your favorite, Len? Scally, the bone splitter, who is a marauder from Vikingfell? No, no, he's he's cool. But no, he wasn't my favorite for the for the reveals. You mean? Yeah. No, no, nope. sorry. He's, he's he's cool. Definitely cool, though. Got some really cool parts. Yeah. For his dwarven skeleton. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very fun. And Hagnon, where did I? Why did I put him here? Because he was, he was, he was around before Necronominus came. You know. So, so do any of you guys know the story about Hagnon? He was a good guy. He was a good guy. Yeah. You know from what the faction? Good guy faction. The good guys, the knights. Yeah. A th- yeah. He was Etheron. one of, uh, yeah, Etheran. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, and he was pretty good. He was quite excellent, actually. You know, and he, he won a great battle, but, you know, he was captured by Brother Mandibulus. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. But tell me, what, what are you going to say? I thought Morgoloth resurrected him and enslaved him or something like that. That's exactly it. Yeah. So, and then she kept him. Uh, but the thing is, when Necronominus came back with the powers that he had, it enhanced Hagnon's powers. So he that's why he turned blue now. <laughs> so he's changed. And the story between, behind Hagnon is now that will he has the power to free himself and fight for Aetheron, or will he decide to fight for Necronominus? You know? So we don't know. We don't know, but I think it's pretty boring if he just decides to stay and fight with Necronominus. I mean, the good guy comeback thing is is way more interesting. So I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Maybe he'll have a whole spectral army to come help that charges out of like the mountain, you know, like like that Lord of the Rings thing <laughs> <laughs> when Aragon comes. Yeah, and he's all like, you know. Hey, I'm here to fight all you guys, and they're like, "Just you?" And he's like, "No, no, not just me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to see a stop motion with these characters. Then, I think I think I know the guy that can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we have some undead builders, and they're most of them in this faction are, of course, skeletons. But the undead builder here, multiple of different choices with ghouls and zombie likes, and so it's, you know, we all got pretty you know happy with seeing necronominus faction has more than skeletons you know yeah and then we have the terpiculi who is a monster character but he's very skeleton so 
these all of the terpiculi were removed with the Necronominus, you know. So when Necronominus come back, all of these monsters come back, and there are there are no one in in mythos, no knights here who has seen these horrible creatures. Right, like when, like that superhero movie, the team up one, like that awesome one, team up superhero movie when all the sky opens up and all the like the like, kind of soldiers come out and they're like fighting, you know, all of them because they need to fight someone besides just the big bad. No, no, the good one, not not Endgame, Justice <laughs> League, Justice oh. League. No, oh. you know Justice they're like the League. bug guys. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the the best superhero God. combo team movie made to date. I don't even remember that one. Yeah, well, I saw watch it. it again. You're oh. missing out, buddy. I've watched it like 20 times. Sorry, I'm sorry, uh, Emil. Go ahead. No, you're, don't be sorry. That, that's, uh, <laughs> no, but it's all, I, uh, I've not seen the movie. I think you should say sorry. So these Terpiculi, <laughs> they need like some kind of keeper, right? Yeah, and here she is, Belualuth, the Beast Master, and she controls both the Terpiculi and many more creatures you know she's he's also a child to necronominus and she's wonderful she is wonderful she is one of the absolute best figures in this uh, faction according to me yeah don't know what you guys think uh, i really love her not not the best but i love I, her I, I can't judge until i have it it's hard to say that is also I still, I still see my favorite one uh grayed out so i'm waiting yeah yeah well the, the this all ends here no okay so continue this is yeah Baratak, warden to the lord of death so the, the cool thing with Baradak is that he of course is a twin according to be a twin with belualith but we don't know what kind of creature Beardak is because it says unknown, you know. So it's a skeleton. We don't know. Is it a ghoul? We don't know. You know. I like them to, them together. I I love the the way with the big and small characters going together, in all fantasy movies and stuff. I I like the the, the team up where there is one huge strong one and there smaller. Smaller yes, character. I think that's yeah. very. That's always very fun, and it's very mythic legions. Yeah, he's, he's so. He, there could be nothing in there. You don't see anything. There could be nothing. Well, that's true. Just like a a little like simple little man could stab him in the back of the leg, and just he could crumple into nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'm mixing stuff up again. I'm sorry. But no. <laughs> <laughs> and why did I put? We have, we have one more character, and that's the the. Thoracis, the first risen. Now this is one of my favorites. The Ark General of the Congregation. I don't have it in hand yet, obviously, but I just can tell you that that thing is awesome. So, I agree. I agree. And I love the soft goods for it. Mm, so good. Yeah. And so, so, so these three ch children was removed with Necronominus and now come back with him. So Thoracis took back the kind of the leadership of the Necronominus, like first leader below Necronominus, and Morgoleth just steps to the side. Um, one, one interesting thing that says about Thoracis uh, is he has prayed a lot while in exile, you know, and that he is returned to usher forth the liturgy of bone, a celebration of death, which will be the end of all in mythos. So, yeah, he's the guy that's getting it done, right? I mean, he's the general. Like, he's, yeah, he's exactly. on the ground, like, really just like making sure the day to days and everything's taken care of with these guys. So, he's pretty high ranker. He is a high rank. And this is, my, this is, this is my thoughts. So, about the children of Necronominus, I put them in this order, kind of like, could this be an order, you know, their ranks? Mm. Like that's yeah. your that's your guess of how the that's my guess. Like Thoracis, Morgulith, Malleus, Brother Mandibulus, Belualuth, and Berdak. What are your thoughts about that? Could it be? 
Definitely could be. Um, yeah, I think it could be. Yeah. I think it. I think it in my brain. My brain gives it a little more tiering. Um, but then you would have like a separate. So like I, I would put, say like Maximilius would be one tier down. But I don't well, yeah. know if I would put Maximilius, him in front of the I don't, children. I, I don't see him as one of the. I see more like his, like the sidekick to Necronominus, not the second in command. You know. Right. Okay. Right. So, that, so he, my... so Maximilius couldn't give commands to like his children. Exactly. Like he couldn't tell them what to do. And it's the same with the um, I forget his name already. The Viking guy, he can't tell the children what to do. I'm picturing it more like the children tell him what they exactly. want done from the father. That's what I'm thinking as well. I just thought it was interesting because the thing with Necronomen is this faction is like I don't think they have any you know struggle within them the ranks it's more you said something about the hive mind steven you know mm -hmm. so these are really the like, extreme cult you know right soulless of, of course skeletons so that's it that was the faction focus